Hi everyone, I am going to explain you about it. inductive loading of a telephone cable. So first of all, we will see a telephone cable. Telephone cable is nothing but an ordinary cable. Here, the wires are insulated with a paper and twisted in pails. So, which results in a negligible values of inductance and conductance in the audio range of frequencies. So, in this one, in the telephone cable, generally, we face a attenuation constants as well as phase constants. So, to reduce that attenuation constants and phase constant, here by increasing the frequency, the attenuation constant is also increases. So, to reduce that attenuation constants at higher frequencies, we are going to add some amount of inductance on the telephone cable. So, first of all, we will see how the attenuation constants and phase constants are getting. So, for that purpose, I am considering a negligible values of inductance and conductance. Therefore, the total series impedance becomes Z is equal to R plus J omega L, L is equal to 0. So, therefore, the series impedance is Z is equal to R and the shunt admittance Y is equal to G plus J omega C. Here, G value is 0, not? so therefore, Y is equal to J omega C. Therefore, the total propagation constant gamma is equal to Z into Y. So, here we are going to find out that attenuation constant and phase constants. So, that is why I am considering the propagation constant gamma the root of z into y so gamma is equal to substitute those z comma y values here so gamma is equal to under root of r into j omega c so gamma is nothing but attenuation and phase constants which is equal to under root of j omega c but we know the under root of j value is simply a under root of 1 at an angle of 90 means which gives you a 1 at an angle of 45 simply substitute this value in this one so you will get alpha plus j beta is equal to under root of omega c at an angle of 45 degrees. Here I am writing this 45 degrees as a cos 45 plus j sin 45. So we know cos 45 value is 1 by root 2, sin 45 value is 1 by root 2. So multiply this omega r c term with this 1 by root 2 and this is a 1 by root term, this is 1 by root 2, no? I am taking this whole term to common. So this is under root of omega r c by 2 1 plus j o n. So therefore from here by comparing the real and imaginary values, we are getting alpha is equal to under root of omega rc by 2. Similarly, beta is equal to j of omega rc by 2. So, here alpha is depends upon the frequency. I think we are under root of omega rc by 2. Beta is omega rc by 2. So, from this one, the phase velocity is omega by beta. So, this is also we will get under root of 2 omega by rc. So, in an ordinary telephone cable, we are getting the alpha attenuation constant and the phase constant and the phase velocity are depends upon the frequency as the frequency is increases the attenuation will be more so in that high frequencies the waves are travel faster than lower frequencies no? so which are going to result in a frequency distortions as well as delay distortions in a telephone cable so that's why to reduce this frequency and delay distortions we are going to add a some amount of inductance on a telephone cable. <coughs> so, this is a in a, so we are adding a some amount of inductance on a telephone cable. So, to get the distortionless conditions, so on the telephone cable, here we know the one formula which is R by L is equal to G by C, R, R by G is equal to L by C. So, this is the condition for distortionless outputs. Okay, so here we are going to uh, increase the inductance value. So if we are going to increasing the inductance value on a uh, cable, so we will get a less amount of distortions. So here we can add the three different types of inductance that one is with the help of a lump hole loading, second with the patch hole loading and third one with the continuous loading. So here we will see. So Consider a uniform loaded cable. So, let us assume in that uniform loaded cable, let us assume that the conductivity of it is 0, Z is equal to 0 upon by increasing the value of L. So, such that, so omega value is always large with compared to the resistor because uh, R is very much less than omega L. Nothing but omega L is very much greater than the R value. Therefore, the series impedance becomes Z is equal to R plus J omega L. And the shunt admittance G, Y is equal to G plus J omega C. 
here I am going to simply take this magnitude values of z and y. So if we consider that magnitude values will become z is equal to under root of r square plus omega square l square at an angle of pi by 2 minus tan inverse of r by l as well as magnitude of y is omega c under root of omega square c square nothing but suppose here square root of will get cancelled at an angle of pi by 2. Okay, therefore substitute those curves z comma y values here so i am getting z gamma is equal to under root of this r square plus omega square l square into omega c here the, here we have the pi by 2 minus tan inverse r by omega l into this angle pi by 2 so add these two angles so you will get a pi value so we can cancel out this square root term we will get omega into lc under root of r plus r by omega l whole square so at an angle of pi by 2 minus tan inverse of r by omega l so here we are saying we are taking the value of l is more so if the uh, uh, r is less than omega l means r square by omega l square become very much less than 1 which is negligible similarly theta is equal to pi by 2 minus 1 by 2 tan inverse of r by omega l then the cos theta becomes cos of pi by 2 minus 1 by 2 tan inverse of r by omega l as well as sin is equal sine of pi by 2 minus 1 by 2 tan inverse of r by omega l. So for small angles the sin theta which is equal to cos theta which is equal to theta. Okay. Therefore the cos theta which is equal to r by 2 omega l and the sin theta which is equal to sin of pi by 2 minus tan inverse of r by omega l which is equal to 1. Simply substitute this gamma is equal to omega lc of this angle theta now so cos theta plus j sin theta simply substitute those values so we'll get gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta of omega into under root of lc r by 2 omega l plus j omega 2 lc so upon solving this we are getting alpha is equal to r by 2 under root of c by l beta omega root lc and the phase velocity it is 1 by root lc so from here we can say the alpha is independent of frequency at higher frequencies we will get the attenuation constant is very low because upon increasing the value of inductance so upon increasing the value of inductance this is in a denominator term now, so you will get alpha is very much less so by adding this inductance we are going to get the less value of attenuation constant if the attenuation constant is very less means we will get the distortionless outputs okay thank you